reverence your presence. We reverence your name. We thank you that you place your name here, Lord God. We've asked you to place your name here. And God, because your name is here, we give you honor in this house. Thank you, Lord, for the people of God that's here, Lord. Thank you for this morning, Lord, as we get ready to uh, get into the Word of God. Thank you for the Facebook audience, those that would hear today and those that would hear in days to come. Father, I pray that you minister to those that are in need, Lord God, and give strength where strength is needed. Amen. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, and Father, we thank you for the holy canon of the Scriptures. And Father God, I pray you give me ability now to teach and preach the Word in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. If you have your Bible, go with me to St. John chapter 8, verse 21. Amen. Uh, David really touched on yes, pretty much everything that I'm dealing with. So all I got to do is get you to get you the end and then I'll be finished. <laughs> <I'm almost laughs> Hallelujah, glory. Amen. But when the Spirit speaks, he's really speaking to somebody along those lines. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah to God be the glory. Okay, my text is St. John chapter 8, verse 21, and St. John chapter 8, verse 24, verse 21 and 24. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, John 8, verse 21 says, Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you seek me. And shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Verse 24. I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Mm. Wow. Yes. My subject is... The simplicity of a sinless life. Oh, I want to talk about the simplicity of a sinless life. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in my introduction, I want to share two things with you. Number one, believe it or not, in our day and time, Almost 99% of the people you meet on a day-by-day -day basis believe that it is absolutely impossible for a human to live a sinless life. And if you don't believe it, start taking a survey and talk to the people you meet and ask them, can you live a sinless life? Ask some of the preachers, all you saints that sit in churches, you ought to ask your preachers that. You really should ask your preacher, do you believe you can live a sinless life? And based on what he tells you, is, you ought to make some decisions. Because if he don't believe you can live a sinless life, there's no way possible he can ever lead you to a sinless life. Come on. Amen. So, I'm sad to announce that in that 99% of those people that believe it's impossible to live a sinless life, I'm sad to announce that in that 99%, most of them say that they are Christians and that they believe in the power of God. Most of that 99% of the people that don't believe you can live a sinless life most of them say they believe in God. And most of them say they believe in the power of God. The second thing I want to share in my introduction is this. Before I get into this message, I want to remind you of those who say, I want to remind those that say that they know God and believe in the power of His Word. I want to remind you of some scriptures. Amen. And believe it or not, uh, there is somebody that needs this message today. And somebody may be struggling with something and you thinking sin and sin is this big powerful thing when in reality it is not the sin, it's the lust. <laughs> it, it's the lust. It's not the act of the sin that is so powerful. It's the lust that you got in you 
that David was talking about this morning and that I'm kind of, you know, coming back talking about. It's the lust that's in you that's making the sin so powerful. If you deal with your lust, you won't have to, have to deal with the sin. It's the lust. All right, let me go through a few scriptures for those who say they believe in God and believe in the power of God. Let me remind you of some scriptures. Amen. And I don't believe we have that problem here. But just in case, let's go through it. <laughs> Romans 6, verse 23. Now, before I close this message, I'm going to go through some things to really show you how simple it is to live a sinless life. But before I get there, let's do some traveling. Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, that's in the New Testament. That was in the Old Testament, and it's in the New Testament. Now, there are some people teaching that Jesus Christ on the cross delivered us from the penalty of sin. Anybody ever heard that? You ever, how many of y'all raise your hand you've ever heard that? Y'all heard that? That, he, that his blood delivered us from the penalty of sin. Now that's really kind of deceptive. Because, let me say this first. If you have been forgiven of sin and you are walking in God's righteousness, you are forgiven and you don't have a penalty because you've been forgiven. Right? But to say that Jesus' blood delivers from the penalty of sin, that's a lie because that's a contradiction to the word because there is still a penalty for sin. Huh? The penalty for sin is still death on this side of the cross and before the cross. So no, the blood does not deliver from the penalty of sin because if you sin, there is still a penalty for sin. Now, if you've been forgiven, yeah, you don't have no penalty. That makes sense? But if you're not careful, a lot of these wise teachers are out here teaching that he delivered us from the penalty of sin. And what it does is it belittles, and it, 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 it uh, belittles sin in the minds of the saints and the minds of people because if you go do it, there ain't no penalty. Man, don't let nobody fool you. It's still a penalty for sin. So that's a trick gospel. You got to watch it. Now, I want to say this again. I am not saying if you're forgiven and you're walking in righteousness that you haven't been forgiven of that penalty. I'm not saying that. You have. Okay. But to say that Jesus' blood done took away the penalty, here the scripture said, for the wages of sin is death. Amen. The wages of sin has always been death and always will be death. Amen. Okay. Now, Ezekiel 18 verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine, and the soul, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. That's still intact. If, 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 you, if you die in a sin, you're going to be eternally lost. Now, that's what Jesus was saying in my text. And I'm going to go read this John 8, 21 again. It says, then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. If anybody die in sin, you cannot end up where Jesus is. That's what he's trying to tell them. If you die in your sins, if you die in a sin, you cannot, you will not abide with him. You will not live where he is. Right. He's telling you that if you die in a sin, you cannot come where I am. Hallelujah. So now let's go on to 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us from some of our right unrighteousness. All of it. And see this is what causes a lot of Christians to have hang-ups. Because they believe in the cross, they believe in the blood, and they confess it all the time. 
But then they still believe that can't nobody live a sinless life. If you believe nobody can live a sinless life, then how is it that the Bible said if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, every bit of it. If he can cleanse you from all of it, that means ain't none left. Amen. I'm just going through a few scriptures. Mark 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. How many of y'all know Christians quote that all the time? There was a person right here in this city. I was on a radio station preaching. And I was preaching about living sin free. And uh, the minister came Minister came on right before me. And they, I know they used to listen to me because all I would uh, have to do is listen to their messages. And I know they're preaching against the very thing I was preaching. So one day I was preaching uh, the whole week on sin free living. Living a sinless life. And the preacher came on and said, don't tell me I'm not going to heaven if I got sin in my life. Came all over the radio, all over the city and said that. Don't tell me I'm not going to heaven. My father Abraham missed it and he went. <laughs> came on the radio and preached that. Then the next week, the same minister came back on and took this scripture right here. Unto him that believeth all things is possible. They were believing to be free from every debt. That they have. Believing to be debt free. But don't believe you can be sin free. Now you know something wrong with that doctrine. But I want to share this. Jesus said unto him. If thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. If you can believe God can heal from cancer. If you can believe God can heal. A broken home. Then you should believe God can heal. A sinful life. Come on. Amen. Now, if we don't believe that, that's why you're having a problem with sin. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me go through a few more scriptures. I'm going to go back to my text. Uh, John uh, 8, 24. I said, unto, I said, therefore, unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Verse 21, then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and the way of God is holiness. He said that way is holiness. There's a way that is called holiness. It's a holy way. He said, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins, and whether I go, you cannot come. Now look at Revelation 21, verse uh, 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiled. There is no one, no one that's going to end up in heaven if they die in a sin. No one. And the reason I'm sharing this is because there's multiple thousands of people on the internet, on Facebook, in churches, in Christendom, believe it or not, deep down in their heart of hearts and deep down in the mindset of uh, in their life, they really do not believe you can live a sinless life. They don't believe it. And some of those Christians will say amen to the truth, amen to every scripture, but deep down in their heart, they don't believe it. And this is why they don't believe it, because their mindset is wrong. If you haven't dealt with your mindset and you haven't dealt with your lust, You'll, 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 you'll go through the motion, but you'll never believe this until you deal with these internal things. When I had my issues in my life, it was an internal problem in a mindset with a lie that I had to deal with. And when I dealt with that lie, I had no more problems. That's it. Hallelujah. If you let a lie reside on the inside of you, or you let lust reside on the inside of you, you'll never... And see, you maybe you haven't committed the act yet, but the act is being committed within, through lust. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. And it's just a matter of time before it manifests. That's right. So it says, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles. I think this is very necessary for us to go back over this sometime. And because people that believe it or not, there's a nine, in that 99%. Most of these people say they believe in God and believe in the power of God. But yet they don't believe you can live a sinless life. So it's got to be addressed. Amen. So it says, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile, neither 
whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, nothing will enter therein that defiles. Okay, now, let me go to a few scriptures that talks about sin. Let me give you a definition for sin. Amen. Hallelujah. You may not think this message is necessary, but it is necessary. Trust me. Sin and offense. It also means to miss the mark. Now, there is no one in heaven creating an offense against anybody. There is no one in God's kingdom, I'm talking about the literal kingdom. There is nobody up there offending anyone. So it only stands the reason that God ain't going to let somebody up there that's going to create an offense. Right. So nobody up there is offending God. Nobody up there is offending each other. Nobody up there is thinking anything that would harm anybody. Right. Or violate anything God says. And nobody up there missing the mark. It's a perfect place. It's a perfect God. And all the people walk in perfection there. So sin is an offense. It also means to miss the mark. Hallelujah. Now let's read a few scriptures. What is sin according to the scriptures? What is it? Uh, James 4 verse 7. I'm going to let you write these down because if I go too fast, because I already got mine written down. James 4 through, same, James 4, verse 17, Romans 14, verse 23, 1 John 5, verse 17, Proverbs 24, verse 9. And then the last scripture we're going to look at is 1 John 3 and verse 4. All right? Now let's look at James 4 verse 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Okay, we're talking about the scriptures now that explain sin. If you know to do good and you don't do it, to him it is sin. Now when you run into a situation when you know good from evil in a situation... Can't you decide to do the good if you want to? Right. Yes, you can. All right. So there's a scripture that's saying, we're going to look at some scripture that talks about sin. All right. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Let's look at another scripture that talks about sin. Romans 14, 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Here's another scripture that explains sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Let's look at another scripture. 1 John 5 verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin. All of it. And there is a sin not unto death. All right, let's go to Proverbs 24, verse 9. It says, the thought of foolishness is sin. Look at all these scriptures talking about sin. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just the thought of foolishness is sin. Now, what some people would do in that 99% I talked to y'all about in the beginning, what some people would do in that 99%, they'll read all of these scriptures and conclude it's impossible to live by sin, live without sin, because just the thought of foolishness is sin. And so they build these doctrines that there's no way around sin, and so they'll come up with, well, God understand. That's a lie, that's a deception, and that's what got the person to sin. Hallelujah. No, let me sum all of these verses up and show you what he's really talking about. 
Because in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, he's going to simplify what sin is. This is going to this going this going to tell you what all of these verses are talking about. And if I had time, I can go back to each verse and show you that verse, that 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 is talking about all of these verses here. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 sums up what sin is. Whosoever committed sin transgress also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's what the Bible says sin is. Now all those verses you just read, if you go back and look at them, they are within this verse right here. If the when a person transgressed one of God's holy laws, that's when he sinned. Now, if you say I can't stop sinning, you saying I can't stop violating God's commandments. That's what you're saying. Now, let's go. I'm gonna jump down because, like I said, David did pretty much taught it all. Amen. Let me jump down, and I want to go to Exodus 20, verse 19 and 20. And then we're going to look at Deuteronomy 28 and verse 9. That was Exodus what? Exodus chapter 20, verse 19 and 20. And then we're going to do Deuteronomy 28, verse 9. Hallelujah. What did I say in that verse? Uh, 1 John uh, 3 and verse 4. Whosoever transgress. Who, who, whosoever committed sin transgress also the what? Law. The law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now in all these other verses we said the thought of foolishness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Uh, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not is sin. All he's talking about is God's laws. That's right. it's, it's a foolish thought to think I'm going to break one of God's laws. That's all he's talking about. When? The thought of foolishness is sin. If you think about it. Breaking one of God's laws, that's a sin. Just thinking about it, that's what he said. Uh, God's ten laws is the faith. So whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Outside of these laws of God is sin. It's all he simply said. Now, let's look at Exodus 20, verse 19 and 20. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou unto us, and we will hear but let not God speak with us, lest we die. Anybody know what's going on in these verses? Anybody remember? Right. And then they heard God's voice. They saw the thunder. They saw the mountain shaking. And they it was just it just scared the living daylights out of them. And so they got so fearful that they told Moses, "You talk to God, and you come tell us what He say. We don't want to talk to God because they was afraid." So that's what's going on here. So it says that they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. Yes. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Look at the next verse. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you. Why did he come in such power and such majesty and such demonstration of, of spirit and power and then talk to him? Why? Because he wanted to prove them. He wanted to know that he, the, the people to know how serious he was. He didn't want them to take him lightly. So he wouldn't, he, he ain't going to come and walk like a chump. Right. Act like a wimp. So he came in a great demonstration. And so, and Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you. And that his fear may be before your eyes. He just want his fear to be for you. But a lot of people just don't fear God no more. Right. If you're thinking about breaking one of God's commandments, you don't fear him. That's right. Now watch what the last phrase said. What did it say? That you what? Sin not. So sin was all about those ten laws that God spoke. So whenever we go back to 1 John uh, and, and look at chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. Sin is the transgression of God's law. This law 
that he's finna release out of his mouth, that's what sin is, is what he's telling you. And he said, I come to prove you, and all you got to do is listen to these ten things that I'm about to tell you, and you would sin not. No. That's all sin is, violating one of those laws. Now look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee what? Y'all got it? Deuteronomy 28, verse 9. I'll give you a minute. I got mine wrote down. Deuteronomy 28, verse 9. Ready? Yes. The Lord shall establish thee what? Holy. And holy people. Okay, read the rest of it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. So holiness is simply being established in the commandments of God. That's it. That's all holiness is. Because holiness came from out of God. It's his character. It's his nature. It's who he is. So he said, now listen, I've come to prove you. I'm getting ready to speak to you. These things I'm getting ready to speak to you, if you fear them and you honor them, you won't sin. And if you keep these, I will establish you a holy people. You're not established a holy people because you dress so pretty. Come on. You're not established a holy people because you wear a long dress. Come on. Come on. That's right. <laughs> now you shouldn't be showing everything either. Right. Amen. You shouldn't be helping some weak man or helping some weak woman. <laughs> Come on, apostle. But on the other hand, wearing long dresses and, 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 and brown stockings is not holiness. Isn't that right, Judy? Amen. <laughs> he said, I'll establish you a holy people. How? If you keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in them. And if you do this, you will never sin. This is the simplicity of a sinless life. This is how simple it is. To live a sinless life. Now let's look at it. Let me ask a couple of questions. And, and you know y'all may wonder why I'm teaching this is necessary. There's people listening that need this. Yes, Alright. Can you stop stealing? Yes. Because yes. one of the commandments was thou shalt not steal. Okay. Anybody claiming that they can't stop stealing. First of all have convinced themselves of a lie. Right. See, now, that's simple. All you got to do is keep your hands in your pocket if you want to. If you have a problem with your hands and you're walking through the store, put, put some handcuffs on them. <laughs> now, you can still think about it, but see, you, you, you need to get your thoughts right. If you're if you that sick, you need to get saved. But I'm just trying to show you how simple it is to live a sinless life. Just don't steal. You see somebody money, leave it alone. All right, let's go to another one. Can you stop lying? Yes. The Bible said thou shalt not what? Bear false witness. All right. Can you stop cheating? Do you have to cheat somebody? I mean, you just have to. It's just all in you. You got to cheat somebody. You got to cheat on your wife. You got to cheat on your husband. You know the man married. You know the woman married. You know what God's word say, but you got to do it. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the simplicity of living a sinless life. It's really simple. You don't have to cheat nobody. You don't have to mistreat nobody. You don't have to lie to nobody. And God said, that's all living sinless is. That's it. And I done made up in my mind. I am never going to cheat anybody ever again. Amen. I am never going to lie to nobody ever again. I ain't got no reason to lie. If you lie, what you doing? Why, why you got to lie to somebody? To deceive. to deceive them? To get an advantage on them? I don't want no advantage on nobody. Amen? Amen? Right. I ain't trying to get over on nobody. Now, those Christians in that 99% need to repent. Right? Most of the people in that 99% I'm telling you about 
honestly believe they can't live a sinless life. Now, y'all may not have that problem, but people got that problem. Now, if for those people that are really weak, at the end, y'all remind me to pray. <laughs> We're going to pray God gives some people some strength. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Because here's the simplicity of living a sinless life. Just stop stealing. Stop lying. Uh, stop cheating people. And I'm making it as simple as possible. These are the Ten Commandments. Because the Bible just told you. Scripture just told you for whosoever committed sin transgressed the law. And when God brought this law to the people, he said, I'm bringing you this law to prove you that you sin not. There is no sin outside of these laws. Right. And if you stay within these laws, you'll never sin. And it is, it's, a, it's as simple as this. Stop stealing. Stop lying. Stop cheating. Can you honor someone if you want to? Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. And I know everybody on Facebook saying the same thing. If not, you need to repent in that 99% saying you can't stop sinning. Right. Can't nobody live a sinless life. That ought not to ever come out of a Christian's mouth. That's right. Because that person won't see God. Nope. Bible said, follow peace yeah. with all men in holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. God is a holy God. Heaven is a holy place. Nothing shall enter therein that defile. That's it. Hallelujah. And it says, oh, uh, can you stop letting your desires get the best of you? Now, if you if you let your desires get the best of you, that's why you're sinning. That's called lust. Uh -huh. That's what David was talking about. Right. If you let you know that thought hit you, nobody gonna know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. Nobody see me. Yo, somebody do see you. Yes. The devil just lied to you. Hallelujah. Stop letting your desires get the best of you. The Bible said, add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, temperance. What is temperance? Self-control. Self-control. If you know, if you know you got a thought, going to, well, I work on a job, well, it seems like it's predominantly women. And I see these men, they just, Lord, I'll be praying for them. I'm like, it ain't going to bother me. I'm keeping my thoughts in line. But if you know your thoughts start getting away from you, you shouldn't ever be caught nowhere talking to that person by yourself. Don't you set yourself up. Now, y'all, may, not, as I said, y'all may not think this necessary, but somebody need this. <laughs> Some of y'all may not need this, but somebody need this this morning. Hallelujah. If you know that you're weak in that area, you shouldn't even you shouldn't even be passing no words, and and, and, and you should deal with your thoughts because it's not worth breaking God's law. Is it worth? Is is that is that man prettier than heaven? Come on now, let's just get some reasoning in here. Is that woman finer than glory? No. Do that woman look better than God? Do that man look better than God? I know you ain't never seen him, but when you see him, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Hallelujah. We just got to get some reasoning in place. If you're having problems in these areas. Hallelujah. Let me finish. Can you put God first if you want to? I mean, if you got a situation, God, your will or my will, can't you do his will in that situation? Yes. Let me, let me go one other place. Can you stop yourself from building an idol? Your hand just going to build a Buddha. Can you stop that if you want to? Now y'all know what I just did. I just went through all ten commandments. And that's how simple it is to live a sinless life. Now for people to say I can't live a sinless life. You saying I'm just going to build an idol. You saying I'm just going to lie. I can't stop lying. You just lied saying that. Yes. So that's how simple it is to live a sinless life. Yes. And people in Christendom need to change their mindset. Yes. Especially in this state of Louisiana. Because there's a big fat doctrine that there is no such thing as sinless perfection. That simply means nobody can live absolutely holy. That simply means nobody can live a sinless life. 
Well, everybody that stayed in that or believed that or got that in you, you are lying to yourself. Because God made it possible for you to live a sinless life. And what he'll do is he'll give you his spirit to empower you. Hallelujah. Now, I want to go through a few things before I close. Let's go back and look at 1 John chapter 3. I'm going to close in these verses here. 1 John chapter 3, I'm going to start at verse 6, and I'm going to go down to verse 10 and read a few other verses, and we're going to stop. Amen? Now, get your Bible. I want you to look at this with me. I want to give you a few keys uh, to stay out, of, stay out of these things. And like I said, there's somebody that needs this this morning, because let me share this with you. God didn't have David to come here and talk about lust, and then have me come and deal with it. That's it. If there's nobody yes. running into these things, if it ain't but one person, it's worth me taking my time to pray for that person, amen, to help that person, and to bring that person back to these basic truths, yes. amen? amen? And everybody else should be praying, glory to God, because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established, glory to God. Now, 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 6, whosoever abided in him, Sin it not. Everybody say abide. Abide. Now, what does that mean? To remain. To stay. To stay. Anybody else? To live. To live. To settle down. Every day of my life, I've decided to abide in this same mindset that I have. I'm gonna please God. Amen. Amen. I'm not gonna cheat anybody. I'm not going to offend no one. And that's the mind that I have. Now, for me to live every day of my life like that, I got to abide in that mind. I got to stay in that mindset. I can't let nobody and nothing take me out of that type of thinking. And so I've decided that not only am I going to do that, Today, but I'm going to do it on a daily basis. And every day of my life, I make that same decision. And, and I'm just not going to let anybody take me out of that mindset. I'm abiding in Christ. Because that's the way Christ thinks. If you don't abide in that, chances are you're going to fail God. Yep. So it says, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. If you stay in him, Stay in the way he thinks, you will not sin. Amen. But if you're thinking, if you start thinking wrong, if you start meditating and extending that thought, and you let that thought turn into lust and it conceive you that already sin in your heart, yeah. called lust. And that's the problem. Not the sin, the lust. And the lust wouldn't have came if you'd have dealt with the thought and not let the thought start provoking you to, to desire. It's, it's really simple to stay out of sin. Think right. Now you can't think right if you're watching something wrong. You may say, I like that movie. I, I am going to think right. No, you don't. No, you ain't going to think right. Turn that thing off. <laughs> okay. Whosoever abided in him, sin it not. If you don't want to sin, abide in his type of thinking. Abide in, the, abide in this Bible. Abide in his word. Abide in his laws. Keep your mind on them. Now watch this verse. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him now. Can anybody explain that scripture? Whosoever sinneth. Now then now first keep in mind this is a person that does not have a sin, but whosoever sins haven't seen him. What is that talking about? What happened when a Christian sin? Does this apply to him? And what is this scripture talking about? I'm gonna let y'all interact here. Come on, uh, Trinity. They sure will speak on because the wages of sin is still death. And the Bible said, Be not deceived, God's not marked whatever man sow, he'll reap. Anybody else want to give that a shot? Give that a shot. What does this scripture mean? Whosoever sin it has not seen him. 
neither known him. You mean, huh? I was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I believe it's uh, not having his spirit. Say that, say that again. Not having his spirit. Not having his spirit? No. Okay, anybody else? Who's, uh, okay, Christy? Does this apply to a Christian? If a Christian see it. It does. I think it applies to a Christian because it's like um, you're doing the opposite of what he says, so you don't know him if you're not walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let me give you some confirming verses to show you what's going on here because now a lot of Christians in that 99% don't believe this, don't believe this apply to a Christian or, or a person who believes God. They, they some kind of way believe it's something magical about being saved, that this don't apply to you, that if you sin, you ain't never knew God. You're, you're in a state where you ain't never knew it. Wow. Man, that's scary. It is. I fear that. Okay, Ezekiel 18 and verse 21 and through 22. Let's go there. Because Ezekiel going to explain what John was saying right here. And Christians need to know this. Because I heard somebody teach this one time, and I'm, I'm going to share with you some, some of the things they taught. Now, Ezekiel 18, verse 21. First of all, before you can even believe this that I'm about to read, you got to know God's serious about sin. Right. Yeah. You got to know sin is not a joke. That lust may feel good right now. But that lust finna to get you in the biggest trouble you've ever been in in your life. And there, in this day and time, the 21st century, there is no guarantee you will come back out. That's correct. Come on, Apostle. I promise you, I was just talking to my wife the other day. I remember when I used to get people saved so fast. I used to lay hands on people, see people full of the Holy Ghost. Man, I saw years that passed, and I see the same spirit touch people, and people go right back to them a uh, 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 hawk pen. You know why? Because the door to salvation, I believe it got nothing but a crack in it. That's what I believe in the spirit. Now, I'm not saying that that's true, but that's what I believe. I believe it's only a crack, and only a few people going to get in now. And so those who are already in, you better take this in consideration that if you go out, there is no guarantee you coming back in. Now, I know God has been merciful to many of us, but let me tell you something. I wouldn't play Russian roulette. Come on, Say it again. Oh, my God. Ezekiel 18, verse 21 and 22. Watch this. If, but if the wicked will turn from his sins that he has committed, and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. He shall not die. This is a wicked man. And God said if this wicked man. All the wicked stuff he has done. If this man turn. This man will live. Yeah. Watch the next verse. All. Somebody say all. All, all his transgressions. That he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. God said, no matter how much wrong this sinner has done, if this sinner turned to me, none of the wrong stuff he done would be mentioned. It will be wiped out. This man will live. Yes, Lord. Everybody yes. like that. Yes. Everybody like that scripture. Every preacher preached that scripture. They love it. Yeah. <laughs> but let, let's look at another verse. Verse 25. Because they was making an argument with God. And God was talking to them through this prophet. Yet you say. The way of the Lord. Is not equal. They said God you're not fair. You're not equal. But watch what God said. Hear now O house of Israel. Is not my ways equal. Or not your ways unequal. He said you're the one unfair. I'm fair. Now let me show you what the argument was about. God just said, I'll take a wicked man that I've done wickedness and when he truly repent and turn to me, I'll forget 
all the wickedness he has done, I won't mention it, and it'll be like he ain't never did it. One day with the Lord will be as a thousand years. And he said, I'm fair. Watch how fair he is. Look at, the, look at uh, verse uh, 24. But when the righteous, somebody said a righteous. The righteous. But when the righteous turn away from his righteousness mm. and committed the iniquity and do it according to all the abominations that the wicked man do it, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned oh. in his trespass that he has trespassed in his sin. And his sin that he has sinned, he shall die. The minute God said, wait a minute. Y'all saying I'm not righteous. I'm, I'm a righteous God. I'm equal with everybody. Just like I will not remember that unrighteous man's deed. If a righteous man turn on me, I don't remember nothing you did wrong. Right. Now let's go back to 1 John 3, 6 and see what John was talking about. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth, you ain't seen him, you don't know him, you, you done broke his commandments. And he said, I don't know you. The very day you commit the sin. Now I know, now see, now see some Christians say, well that, ain't, that can't be what that means. He just told you in Ezekiel that I'm fair. I'm equal. I'm just. I'm okay. So if that's not fair, then this is not fair with the unrighteous man. But we like that because if a wicked man turn, God don't remember nothing. But this is the part many people can't digest. If a righteous man go back and break God's commandment, God said, "I don't remember." And you said, "Man, that's hard." What well, was it hard for God to miss to get the sin of sin? Right. Why? That's what John talking about right there. Right. Yes, Any question? That's good. <laughs> so, lust ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. That woman ain't worth it. That feeling you feel it, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it, it, worth it to bring shame on yourself, shame on the name of the God. Hallelujah. Glory. It ain't worth it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's go on and keep reading. Little children, let no man deceive you. Don't let nobody fool you now. You, right. you got to deal with these thoughts right here. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let your own self deceive you. Don't let your lust deceive you. Don't let what you feel and trick you. It ain't that, it ain't that pretty. It feels good. It feels like it's going to feel good. No, it's not. It's going to harm you. It's going to harm not only you, but many others. God trying to get some thoughts out of some people's minds. Yes. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. He said, you are the devil now. You break my commandments, you are the devil. I do not want to be of the devil. I know that's right, Nisha, I don't want to be of the devil. I don't want God to tell me I'm of the devil. So, I I look now God's commandments are simple. The Bible says his commandments are not grievous. Why would I want to break one of them to be of the devil? That ain't even common sense. <laughs> yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm about finished. Whosoever is born of God do it not commit sin. Now that word commit there, I done heard a preacher preach and he said, well that word means don't be committed to sin. Yeah. In other words, you know, everybody fall into these things, but just don't be committed to them. That preacher lied. Yeah. That is not what that means. Somebody said that it means don't practice it. You don't find that in the scripture nor in the Greek. No sin at all. It means don't do it. So don't let people fool you there about practicing or don't be committed to it. No, the Bible said don't do it. <laughs> Amen. Simple. Hallelujah. He that committed sin is of the devil. The devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God do it not commit sin. You're not, you're not going around thinking about sinning. You're not going around thinking. If you're born again... You're not going around thinking about breaking God's commandments. If you think about breaking God's commandments, especially in light of truth, 
you don't love God. Nope. And you may not be born again. Yes, For his seed remaineth in him. Now the seed is the word of God and the Holy Ghost. This seed, when the Holy Ghost and the word of God remain in you and you abide in it, you ain't going around thinking about this stuff. And so therefore you're not lusting after it. Hallelujah. And he cannot sin. You cannot sin if you keep abiding in the, the mind of God and in the Holy Ghost. You ain't. You can't do it. You can't. You can't abide in Him and sin at the same time. Is what He said. And He cannot sin because He is born of God. Now watch this. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. It is not hard to tell the children of the devil from the children of God. That's right. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. If people going around just violating this stuff here, they are not God's children. That's simply what he's telling. People going around honoring God and honoring what God has said, those are God's children. That's what that, the scripture trying to tell you right there. Neither he that loveth his brother, loveth not his brother. Okay, now let's look at before, no, let's go here. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 and 16, then I'm about done. Love not the world, Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In other words, if you love something in this world so much that you will violate God, he's saying you don't love God. That, that's simple, right? If something in this world will make you violate something God said, then the something in this world you love more than God and you broke what? The first commandment. Because he said, don't have no other gods before me. He said, don't, don't make any idols. Don't have any idols. No idols in your soul. Lust is an idol. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. I believe I'm going to stop right there and pray. Somebody on Facebook may need this. Maybe somebody in here. Let's, let's, let's just bow our heads and pray. Because let me tell you something. God didn't bring this up for no reason at all. God didn't have David talk about this and have me come talk about it. That's right. Nothing at all. Now, somebody may not be having this problem, but... Even if there's somebody that's having this problem, we're here to pray and we're here to help you through. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come right now. Hallelujah. We intercede and we pray for the sons of God. God, those that's on Facebook, somebody, Lord, really don't believe you can live a sinless life. And God, they may not ever confess it. They may not ever sin, but deep down in their heart, they're struggling with the thought that can't nobody live sinless. Can't nobody... Or uh, uh, live a perfect life without missing the mark. But God, that's a lie. And Father, we come at that lie today. We come at that lie that's in the hearts and the mind of your people. And I pray, God, that you would cause the devil, Lord God, to be revealed in whatever doctrine, whatever mindset, whatever desire, whatever lust. Lord God, is coming against your people. We rebuke it in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. And God, we pray right now for all of your people. There are people, Lord God, that have been entangled by things. And Lord, they may be suffering and they may be going through. But God, we come off a hope for, to those people today. And God, sometimes you have to give us a wake-up call to show us how devastating sin is. And Lord God, Satan sometimes take and, 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 and make it seem light. But God, it's not a light thing. To be called the devil's children, Lord, when we was once yours. God, it's not a light thing, God, to walk away from your presence, Lord, and not knowing that we may not get back in. It's not a light thing, God. And I pray, God, that you would put a fear back in all of your people. That, Lord, uh, your law I keep as the apple of my eye. Father, your word I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your people will come to realize that it's not worth disappointing you. It's not worth bringing shame to your name. Father, we give you praise. I pray for those weak saints. I pray for those that are weak in the flesh, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I want to read this scripture before I finish my prayer. Let me read this scripture. Hallelujah. It, it's not, somebody says it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Hallelujah. It could, be, it could be a career. It could be something natural. I heard David say that this morning. It don't have to be a woman or a man. Yeah, that's right, it could be lust for ministry. Are you, not, are you satisfied with just being satisfied with God? Or you got to be in the show? 
Man, if God don't take me no further than where I am, if God don't ever take me all the way to the world, I'm happy right here, right now, in God, with God alone. I will sit down and be happy with God. If you're not content, you're on your way to sin. Bible said, be content with such things as you have. He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you that you may boldly say the Lord is my helper. Yes. Yes. People need to come back to being just satisfied with God. Thank you, Father. That's right. First Peter. See, when Satan can get you anxious, he, he know what it takes to get you to fall over the edge. Hallelujah. First Peter, I think it's chapter 4. <clears throat> verse 1 and verse 2. Somebody need to hold this scripture to heart. For as much then as Christ has suffered in the flesh for us in the flesh on yourselves likewise with the same mind. You got to have your mind made up. Watch this. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, Jesus suffered in his flesh. He never sinned. You can suffer in your flesh and never sin. In your flesh, you may feel a passion to do something wrong. Well, suffer. Yes. Suffer with that passion and yes. refuse to do wrong in that passion. Because that passion is lust. Yes. That's what it is. Lust is the fuel that leads to sin. And so, if you deny that thought, that feeling, that lust, if you deny it, it's a suffering comes along with that. But if you suffer and don't go do it, you will cease from sin. Yes, hallelujah. You won't do it. Glory to God. You won't do it. And you'll die to that thing. Somebody needed to watch this. It says, likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Watch next verse. That he no longer should live the rest of his life or his time in the flesh to the lust of men. Look at all his lust keep coming up. It's lust that got in. Is the lust worth breaking the heart of God? Is the lust or the desire you're feeling worth letting him down, bringing shame on your ministry, shame on your life, shame to God and the kingdom and maybe not getting back in? Is it that serious? No. Well, you love the world. You love what you feel it more than you love God. Hallelujah. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. You can live the rest of your time here on earth doing the will of God. I hate sin with a passion. And I'm going to live the rest of my days in holiness, keeping God's commandments. I'm going to serve him till I die. In fact, I'd rather die than sin. Father, we thank you right now for this determination to be upon all your people. God, bring us back to where we first were. Father, if there's a temple problem, if there's a neighbor problem, whatever the problem may be, if there's a temptation, Father God, to, to for money or, or, or for fame or even for ministry, you can be tempted for ministry. You can be tempted to want to be on the spot. That's lust. God, we're satisfied with you. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Father, we love you. Tell the Lord how much you love him. Tell the Lord you love him. Hallelujah. I love you, God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for this house, Lord. I thank you that we're people that love you here. We're people that want to keep your commandment. We're in covenant with you. We realize we're born in a covenant. And God, we will not violate the covenant. I pray, Lord, for the people on Facebook. Help them realize they're born in covenant with you. And Father, help them get these bad doctrines out of their minds and out of their hearts. Father God, everybody in heaven living a sinless life. And God, I thank you, you got people on earth living a sinless life. And Lord, it's really simple to stay out of sin. We're just not going to lie. We're not going to cheat. We're not going to steal. Lord, we're not going to lust. We're not going to put any gods before you, God. It is really simple to walk this life and your commandments are not grievous. 
God, I praise you right now in Jesus' name. Now give this house the strength it needs. Give the people here the strength they need. Help us judge ourselves. Help us judge ourselves. I want everybody to judge everything. Look at everything. Glory to God. Now don't bring a word from like this. Look. Look at everything. Look at every angle. Glory to God. Anybody need prayer now? I'm, I'm stay here. We'll pray for you. Glory to God. Anybody on the Facebook, you need prayer for anything. We'll stay here and pray for you. This is important to God. Hallelujah. It's important to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Saints, all saints pray and stretch your hands out. Don't, don't be trying to figure out who it is, what it's, what they want. No. We just want to love God. We want to be close to God. It's just not worth it to displease God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord God, for strengthening this house today. Thank you, God, Lord, for the saints that's here today. These saints, I believe, love you, God, and they love you so much that they'll draw near to you, God. And, God, you draw near to them. I lay my hands upon them, Lord God, and I pray you impart strength to their lives, oh God. Father, I remember I was in a place one time I struggled with things. But, God, you brought me out of that place. Now, God, I thank you for bringing these saints out, Lord God. Father, let them know they're in a place where... That you have family, Lord, that love them. And family they can talk to. And God, I pray you bring them out, God. Help them deny every thought of evil, Lord. Father God, strengthen them in Jesus' name. I pray for this young man, oh God. Father, I lay my hands up on him, Lord God. And many times as I lay my hands on people, you touch them. And God, this man is no different, Lord. I lay my hands up on you and I ask you to touch this young man. Father, I pray that you help this young man come to some decisions in his own life. Father, God, show him the simplicity of living right. And God, give him your spirit. Father, give him a hunger to cry out for your spirit and to be concerned, Lord God, and to get curious. Father, God, help him in his life. Father, open doors for him, Lord God. Give him opportunities on jobs, God. Give him the things that he needs, Lord. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for this entire family. God bless them and strengthen them, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Glory to God. Father, come on, everybody say, Lord God. Lord God. Fill me anew and afresh. Fill me anew and afresh. With your spirit. With your, spirit. With your power. With your power. I, love I love you with all my heart. All my soul. All my mind. All my strength. I draw near to you. Help me see the bushes the devil hide behind. And we rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Hey, we won't bow to the enemy. Hallelujah.